Hi, kindergartners. Welcome to our last Making Meaning lesson. You might have seen me before in the Making Meaning lesson last week, or if it is your first time watching Making Meaning lesson, welcome. My name is Miss Choi, and I teach kindergarten at Hazel Wolf K-8. I cannot believe it's the last week of school already. I know you've been missing your teachers and friends, and I know your teachers and friends, they've been missing you so much too. And I know it's sad that it's going to be our last Making Meaning lesson, but I'm so excited that I can spend another time with you together today for our last lesson. So, kindergartners, are you ready? I hope you enjoyed this, our last lesson together. So, before we get started, I'm going to show you some few things that you might see in this video. So first, you will see this think sign in, the vi in this video. So when you see this think sign, I want you to stop and I want you to think about the stories or about your ideas to share with your partners. So you will spend time thinking when you see this sign or when you see this turn and talk, you will, you will be turning and talking to your partner or like stuffies, we don't have any partner like we did in the classroom, right? So you will be turning and talking to your stuffy or you can talk to yourself or you can talk to your pet or family members or siblings or you can even talk to your teachers you can pretend calling to miss Choi or your teachers or friends right so during turn and talk the most important thing is i want you to feel comfortable talking and sharing about the books so during this turn and talk i want you to use any language that you feel the most comfortable with for me miss Choi, i feel comfortable when i speak in korean so when I did a turn and talk, I will turn and talk to my stuffy in Korean. So in this video, you are welcome to use any language that you feel the most comfortable with. All right. Kindergartners, are you ready? OK, let's get started. Hey, readers, today we're going to think about the kinds of books you like and about the things that they do to help us understand the stories better. And you will also hear a new story and you will think and talk about it with your partner. And I've got some books that you heard throughout this year. Here are some books. Remember, some of these are non-fiction books that they give you a true information about real things. And some of these are fiction, make-believe, right? So here are some non-fiction books that we read. Remember this book by Plain? We learned that planes carry people and cargo and pilots and flight attendants for complaints and planes flies over cities, countries and mountains and it lands on water, ship and ground. We also read this nonfiction book about a baby, a harbor soul pup about Sydney, right? This book, this book was about Sydney being rescued by Sea Mammal Center and scientists took care of her until she got stronger and healthier. And finally, she was able to return to the ocean. And we learned about the moon by the, reading this book. The moons reflect sun's light to earth and it moves around the earth once every 28 days. And we learned there are craters on moon surface, right? Which makes moon surface rough. And we read some non <coughs> fiction books. Remember this book? Peter was having a birthday party and he was on his way to send a special invitation for his special friend, Amy. And there was a thunderstorm on his way to the mailbox, but he finally able to send, it, send her invitation and Amy came to the party. And this cookies week, remember this one? Yeah, we read a story about a kitten called Cookie and we saw how he spent the week, right? Monday through Sunday. So Monday, he falls into the toilet and Tuesday, he knocks a plant off. And Wednesday, he upsets the trash can. Remember this story? This funny story? Yes. And here's another fiction book, Brave Bear. Remember this bear? Bear wanted to help the baby bear gets home to its nest 
But then the tree was so tall and he was so small. The bear was so small, right? So he wasn't sure he could do it or not. But he tried it, tried it, and then after he made it, right? He helped the baby bear to get home to its nest. So, readers, which of these books did you like the most? Why did you like that book? Let's turn and talk to your partner. All right, let's come back, readers. I hear your favorite books. I like this book, The Moon is my favorite because I was able to learn some new fun facts about the moon. That's why I like this one the best. And readers, remember you did several different things this year that help you understand the books you heard. Yes, remember we used different strategies. Yeah, sometimes you made a picture in your mind as you listened to the story. Do you remember? This one, this book, this part, it says, suddenly there was a flash of lightning and a roll of thunder. You made a picture in your mind, oh, what's happening in the story, right? And sometimes you stopped and wonder about the book, right? When we read our book about Sydney, we stopped and wonder, oh, what's going to happen to um, to Sydney, right? And sometimes you thought about how a book reminded you of your life, right? And also, you practice retelling a story in pairs to help you understand the book and remember it, right? So readers, today you will probably do some of these things, the strategies, today as you listen to the new story. All right, are you ready? Okay, let's get started. So here's the book that we're going to read today. Here's the cover page of our book. It's called A Porcupine Named Fluffy. It is written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lane Mansinger. Here's the cover page. So this is a story about porcupine and a rhinoceros that become friends. So readers, what do you know about porcupines? Hmm. Yeah, you might have thought that they are small animals, that they have sharp spines or quills to protect them from the predators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what does fluffy mean? What are some fluffy things? Yeah, when something is fluffy, it is very soft and puffy, right? Cotton balls and towels are fluffy and stuffed animals. It's really soft and it is fluffy, right? So, readers, are you ready for the story? Show me a quiet thumb if you're ready. All right, let's get started. A Porcupine Named Fluffy. It's written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. A Porcupine Named Fluffy. It's written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. When Mr. and Mrs. Porcupine had their first child, they were delighted. Delighted means happy, pleased. So when Mr. and Mrs. Porcupine had their first child, they were delighted. Now he need a name. Should they call him Spike? No, Spike was too common. Common means ordinary or known by a lot of people. No, Spike was too common. Should they call him Lens? No, Lens sounded too fierce. Fierce means terrible or dangerous. No, Lens sounded too fierce. Should they call him Needle Rooser? No, Needle Rooser was too long. Prickles? Pokey? Prolian? Then together they had an idea. Let's call him Fluffy. It's such a pretty name, Fluffy. But soon there came a time when Fluffy began to doubt that he was Fluffy. Doubt means be uncertain. 
But soon there came a time when Fluffy began to doubt that he was Fluffy. He first became suspicious when he backed into a door and stuck fast. Became suspicious means thought something was not right. And stuck fast means became very tightly attached. You see him attached to the door? He first became suspicious when he backed into a door and stuck fast. That was not a fluffy thing to do. He was even more convinced when he accidentally slapped on his back and poked holes in the mattress. Convinced means sure of something. He was even more convinced when he accidentally slapped on his back and poked holes in the mattress. A very unfluffy thing to do. When he tried to carry an umbrella, he knew the truth without a doubt. Fluffy definitely wasn't. So readers, let's stop here. So readers, what has happened in the story so far? Why is Fluffy unhappy? Let's turn and talk. All right, let's come back. I hear Peter saying, unlike his name Fluffy, he poked the holes in the mattress and he poked the umbrella. And even he was stuck on the door in the previous page, right? So that's why he's unhappy. Okay, let's keep reading. So he decided to become fluffier. Clouds are fluffy, he thought. I'll be a cloud. But he couldn't stay up. I know, pillows are fluffy, he said. I'll be a pillow. But when his mother sat on him, she was not pleased. He tried soaking in a bubble bath for 45 minutes, but he did not become fluffy. He became soggy. Soggy means really wet. He became soggy. He tried whipped cream. He put a little on each quill. Quill means sharp on a porcupine. Do you see it? He put a little on each quill. It was not easy, and it took more than a half a day. But this did not make Fluffy Fluffy. They should have named me Gooey, he sighed. He ate a lot of fluffy marshmallows. He rolled in shaving cream and feathers. He even tried to become a bunny, but the truth remained. Fluffy wasn't. So readers, let's stop here. What has happened up to this point in the story? Turn and talk. All right, let's come back. I heard readers share that Fluffy tried to do different things to become more fluffy, like become fluffier, right? So he tried to put whipped cream on his quill and he ate a lot of fluffy marshmallows and he rolled in the shaving creams and feathers, but he didn't change. So readers, what are you wondering about the story? What are you wondering about the story? Turn and talk. Ooh, I hear readers say, is he going to try another things to become fluffier? And I also heard, oh, is he going to love his name, Fluffy? Or is he going to change his name? Let's see, keep reading. One afternoon, Fluffy set out for a walk, trying to think of ways to become Fluffy. Before long, he met a very large rhinoceros. Said rhinoceros, I'm going to give you a rough time. Fluffy didn't know what a rough time was. Rough time means bad time. Fluffy didn't know what a rough time was, but he didn't like the sound of it at all. What is your name, small prickly thing? asked rhinoceros unkindly. Fluffy said, Fluffy. The rhinoceros smiled. He giggled. Then he laughed out loud. 
He rolled on the ground. He jiggled and slapped his knees. He rolled with laughter. A porcupine named Fluffy, howled the rhinoceros. Fluffy was embarrassed, but he tried to be polite. And what is your name? he inquired. <laughs> I can't say it, giggled the rhinoceros. Hubert? suggested Fluffy. Uh, 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 oh, help! I just can't say it. I'm laughing so hard, said the rhinoceros. Harold? Or maybe Herman? asked Fluffy. No, gasped the rhinoceros. It's her, her, her hippo. Hippo? Rhinoceros named Hippo? Fluffy smiled, he giggled, and he laughed out loud. He jiggled and slapped his knees. He howled with laughter. A rhinoceros named Hippo! Fluffy cried. A porcupine named Fluffy and rhinoceros named Hippo. It was almost more than they could bear. Hippo and Fluffy rolled on the ground, giggling and laughing until tears came to their eyes. At last they lay exhausted on the ground. Exhausted means very tired. At last, they lay exhausted on the ground. From the time on, they were the best of friends. And Fluffy didn't mind being Fluffy anymore, even though he wasn't. All right, readers, now we finished our book about Porcupine, Fluffy. You did a great job. High five. Yes, you did a great job on listening story about Porcupine, Fluffy. So readers, now let's discuss about the book. So readers, why isn't Fluffy happy with his name? Why isn't Fluffy happy with his name? Let's think. All right, let's come back. Oh, I hear readers say, unlike his name, he was doing unfluffy things, right? He stuck on the door, and he was poking holes. He was making holes in the mattress and he was poking an umbrella, right? Yeah. So, readers, what do Fluffy and Hippo have in common? What makes them the same? Let's think. All right, let's come back. Oh, I hear, readers, I hear you said both Fluffy and Hippo have names that don't match with their looks or appearance. Yeah, and after they met each other, they changed how they think of their names. I agree. And now they're all happy with their names. I agree. So, readers, at the end of the story, why doesn't Fluffy mind being named Fluffy anymore? So at the end of the story, why doesn't Fluffy mind being named Fluffy anymore? So turn and talk. Yes, readers, I agree. I also think Fluffy changed the way of thinking. Yes, now he accepted who he is, right? So readers, you have read and listened to many stories this year in Making Meaning, right? Yes. So readers, what did you like about thinking and talking about books this year? Hmm. How does sharing and talking about books at school or at home help you grow as a reader? Let's think. Right, let's come back. I heard readers say they liked talking about the stories with their partner and with the class because it helped you understand the stories better, right? And I also heard the readers say when we talk about the books together, we can hear what other people think about the stories. Yeah, that's fun. So readers, you did a great job on listening what other people think about the stories 
and you did a great job on talking and sharing about the books so that you can understand the stories better. So readers, you worked so hard this year in making meaning. Now let's move on to independent reading. All right, readers, now let's move on to independent reading. For this independent reading, you can read fiction, nonfiction, poetry, or any other type of books during this independent reading this week and over the summer. So readers, remember, it is always good to think as you read about what you like about your books, right? So this week in the learning packet, you will get to think, draw, and write about your reading lives. So one of the questions that you are going to write about is, what is one of your favorite books that you have heard and read this year? Why do you like that book? So you're going to write your favorite book and draw your favorite book, and you're going to write why is that your favorite, okay? So here's my favorite book. Here, I wanted to share my favorite book. Here, I chose A Letter to Amy. Do you remember this book, A Letter to Amy? It's written by Zara Zakitz. Yeah, it was a story about Peter, right? Peter is having a birthday party, and he's already asked all his friends to come to his birthday party. But Amy, his special friend Amy, he wanted to invite her and he wanted to write her, her special invitation. And when he rushed out into a thunderstorm to mail it, he runs headlong into trouble. Remember the story? Yeah? And then after, he finally mail to Amy her um, special invitation and then Amy came to his birthday party right remember so so I chose that book and then I wrote oh my favorite book is called a letter to Amy because I can make a picture in my mind of thunderstorm I also like pictures in the story and I drew in one of the parts in the story Right. So today you are going to choose. Just think about the book first. Hmm. Think about the book that you have read and heard this year, and then you decide what you are going to write and draw about. And make sure to write the reason why you like that book. Sound good, readers? All right. So, readers, that's your job for independent reading today. And then I'm going to show you where you can get fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and other kinds of books, okay? So here are some online resources where you can get more books to read at home. So online reading. You can visit SBS website, Seattle Public Schools, and then you can select Student Family Porter, and then click on Academic Tools, and you will find more books to read. So you can go to Seattle Public Schools, and you can go to Seattle Public Library, or you can go to Pebble Go, or you will be finding more books in Tumblebook. And there are some other online reading websites. You can go to Scholastic Learn at Home, or you can go to Storyline Online. I hope you enjoy reading. All right, kindergartners, thank you for watching and joining our last Making Meaning lesson. I really enjoyed reading our last story, Porcupine, today. And I really enjoy sharing my favorite book with you in this video. So, kindergartners, I hope you all have a wonderful summer and keep you reading and listening to stories every day. All right, have a great summer. Bye.